Hey guys, welcome to Hammer Paints. Um, in this video, it's going to be something a little bit special. We're going to paint the, multi, the mighty Falsham Yaga. So um, I've selected this model here. A um, couple of reasons why I've selected this model. Number one, he's got a helmet, um, just a normal grenadier style helmet, or the Falsham helmet. It's not actually the uh, camoed one. So I can show you how to put the eagle and the hair mark on it. Um, and this one's got a lot more defined features in the back probably doesn't show up in the camera as much but when we paint it it'll um, start showing up then now um, I've already undercoated the model now um, I don't undercoat in spray paints or paint I undercoat in something called uh, waterproof drawing ink um, the reason I undercoat in this is because it's very very watered fine product um, it's uh, pigment heavy uh, it goes on nice, preserves all the detail, it doesn't take any detail away, it's pretty much just like dipping it in water, um, it, it's painted on, it's not actually dipped, but it's just a way of explaining it, and um, it gives you that black undercoat, uh, it doesn't rub off, and paint actually takes to it very nice. Okay, so we've got the under, uh, undercoated figure, I'm going to start off by selecting a... Um, not a super fine brush, but one that's um, uh, it's 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 like a thicker brush that will hold paint, um, and it's got a finer tip on it. But it's definitely not my um, fine detail brush. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to select um, German camo beige from my undercoat. Um, that will be applied to all the jump schmock areas in here, just to the above his knee, because the jump schmock went down just to above their knee. Um, and we're going to leave the bread bag, the water canteen, and the straps. We're going to leave all them out. We don't want to paint them. Um, paint, I paint right up to the straps. A lot of people leave a black line and stuff like that, but I come in later and we'll just black line him. And um, same with the little ammo bags here. So first off, we'll start with the German camo yeah, with beige. the German camo beige. Um, it's just straight. Um, I use it straight. Um, I don't water it down too much. Um, most of the Vallejo model paints are quite watery anyway. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, if I can get this in here, we're just going to start applying it to the jump schmock like such. As I said, I paint right up to the straps. We'll um, black line it later. We want to leave the ammo bag, the bread bag, and the water canteen, and these couple of ammo pouches back over here as well. We don't want to paint them at all, and we end up with something that looks like this. As you can see, I left all the belts, the bread bag, the water canteen, all his ammo pouches. The one thing I didn't leave, which we can just touch up later, is the pouch, uh, the belt that actually goes around his um, guts. Um, I forgot to. Um, leave that out but that's okay we, as I said we can touch that later now I'm going to paint the pants in Luftwaffe uniform the reason I use Luftwaffe uniform is because a lot of the Falsham Yaga did have Luftwaffe uniforms underneath so um, in my army I'm doing um, a mix and match of Luftwaffe and German field grey um, so, but for this particular piece here I'll use the Luftwaffe uniform so we're going to paint his pants in Luftwaffe uniform just like that and just take as we go and just taking care not to get too much paint on his boots and we don't want to get any paint on the um, German camo beige we've already yeah. done and just like that now um, if I can get this to focus um, it looks something like that so you've got your jump schmocks and your pants painted in the little forefer jump schmock in the camo beige, German camo beige, and pants in his little fluffy uniform. Uh, I've left the boots, um, and anything else where the German camo beige is, it needs to be left black, apart from that belt as I described before, we, um, we've we left. Now with this, I'm going to apply a wash completely over the top of it. Um, I've I make my own washes. Now my wash ratio is five drops of waterproof drawing ink. So five drops of this to ten drops of medium, a flow medium, and a hundred drops of water to make my washes. 
Now this wash, um, it's it's it acts very very different to your normal washes uh, when you make your own wash. This wash I found it seems to be a formula, as I'll show you if I can get this to um, focus in. Now when I apply it, as you can watch, it goes straight. The capillary action goes straight to all the gaps and gives you a really really nice shadow. Um, this was an accident that I come across this, so I got sick of paying six, seven dollars for a bo bottle of wash and um, so I decided to spend twenty dollars on a big bottle of um, ink and some medium and now I can make it forever and ever and ever pretty much as a figure of speech um, for near nothing and the actual effect it gives you is brilliant it's just, it, as I said it was an accident as you can see, it just capillaries into all the little nooks and crannies and gives you some really, really nice detail. And then that's how um, you can get some beautiful shadowing. Now, a lot of people use brown inks and stuff like that. Um, I've always used black for this scale because black is a shadowing color. Um, and I've always found for the infantry, it gives really, really nice results. So I've just given him a... I wouldn't say a generous, you don't go stupid with the wash, you just go sort of controlled and just make sure that the gaps and nooks and crannies where you want it to be shadowed have have the wash in them pretty much. So something looking along these lines, something like this. And that's pretty much what I'm after. So let's try and make this zoom right, right in. Come on, focus. There we go. As you can see, it does darken up the uniform slightly, but we want it to be slightly dark anyway. We don't want it to be too bright for more natural effect. And you can see that that bluey grey that gets mistaken for blue a lot of the times starts to um, come back to a better colour and when we start adding layers because the way I paint these are in layers it will be um, definitely uh, it, it definitely gives a nice shadowing effect. Alright I'm going to let this dry guys and I'll be back. 